over the past three months, uh, the building committee, along with an advisory group uh, composed of teachers and principals of both the uh, Pond Cove and Middle School, uh, have been working diligently with the team of SMRT, our architectural firm, uh, to prepare a plan for rehabilitating and uh, adding to the, both the middle school and the Pond Cove school. Uh, we've looked at master plans, we've met with uh, the planning uh, the department and planning board, uh, we've evaluated uh, all of the uh, town center uh, committee report uh, and tried to incorporate all of these ideas into uh, the plan. Uh, we've est we established goals and objectives, uh, which is presented in our mission statement. Uh, we evaluated and developed a program uh, that we hope enhances teaching and learning. Uh, and we developed a facility which supports the program. Uh, we hope that, that you'll uh, offer comments and suggestions. Uh, the participation with the committee has, and all members of the committee has been exceptional. Uh, we've had a great deal of input and it's been an evolution over uh, the course of, of the three months uh, to uh, develop this, this program, this plan. Uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, turn the meeting over to, uh, why don't I introduce first uh, the team of Stevens, Morton, Rose, and Thompson. Uh, first is Ellen Belknap. Uh, she is the uh, project architect. Uh, Arthur Thompson, who is the uh, principal in charge of the project, and Paul Stevens. Paul Stevens has been actively involved throughout the design of this project, and uh, we'll commence with a presentation. I'm, a, I'm the one that got stuck with the speaking. <laughs> <laughs> I think I ought to also, uh, also mention that uh, another principal in the firm, Dana Morton, uh, has been very involved in, in the process uh, from the site planning and, and civil engineering uh, end of things, and Dana was not able to, uh, not able to be with us tonight should start off by saying that, as Paul indicated, we're sort of mid-process or perhaps a bit beyond uh, mid-process right now uh, and are at the point where concepts are beginning to gel, but there haven't been any final decisions uh, made yet. And there are uh, still a lot, there's still a lot of fine-tuning uh, that needs to be done in, in developing, uh, developing the concept. And as a matter of fact, this is, is so, so much in the state of evolution that there are a number of members of the building committee that hadn't seen what we'd done until just now because we changed the scheme again since last <laughs> since the meeting that we had last Thursday. Or, although both Paul and Connie uh, had had a chance to uh, had a chance to see that, so it is is continually evolving. But our, our charge has been to develop a concept design for both the elementary school and the middle school, and and the major things that we are charged with accommodating are the 10-year population growth. Uh, to facilitate the uh, program and curriculum in the school, to upgrade the existing conditions of the buildings, uh, which any of you who've read the latest uh, newspaper uh, that just came out gives you a very, I think, a very, very good picture, a very good picture of that, and to make the buildings accessible uh, to everybody, which they are not now, and, and the accessibility that there is, is is extraordinarily difficult in some cases. We made a couple of assumptions going into the process. Uh, but, but not a lot. Uh, and I think two of the assumptions that were, were very firm were that we felt that the 1930s building uh, should remain as a part, an integral part of the concept and as a cornerstone uh, of whatever we did. And, and that's not just because Bill Jordan and I went to school there uh, and graduated from high school there, but I think a lot of other people besides the two of us felt, felt that way. Uh, the other thing was that we felt it important that obviously that the temporary space that's being used, the temporary classrooms, uh, be replaced. As you, I'm sure, all know, those of you who've got kids in the system, those of you who are reading the paper, uh, know that there are an awful lot of problems. And I think we took a good hard look at all of the studies that had been done prior to this time, uh, as well as assessed the existing conditions ourselves, both in regard to the site uh, and the buildings. And there are a number of issues on the site uh, which we felt uh, were, were of, of great concern, uh, and, and these concerns are shared by, shared by the committee. The, the first one being that there is now, and has been for years, 
through traffic through the mall uh, here as well as parking in the mall which has created a lot of congestion there are safety concerns in regard to conflicts between buses automobiles and kids uh, visually it's certainly not uh, a parking lot really isn't what you want for the centerpiece of your of your school system in town uh, and there is no uh, no uh, real adequate parking at this point in time. You're very, very short on parking, which contributes to the, to the congestion there. In regard to the buildings, we've got a situation where we really have railroad cars, if you will, or a train, a train of railroad cars uh, in, each of the, in each of the complexes, both the middle school and in the, uh, and in the elementary school, uh, which creates a, a total lack of, of center for the schools and, as a matter of fact, as a as a newcomer approaching out here, it's very difficult to even have the vaguest idea where the front door is to either one of those, either one of those complexes. Uh, the buildings are all poorly accessible in addition to not knowing how to get in. Uh, once you get in, it's very difficult to get around, plus it's a very, very long, due to the arrangement, of the linear arrangement of the buildings, it's a very long ways from here to there uh, in most cases. The physical condition uh, of the buildings is, is close to abysmal, I think. Uh, and many of you have followed the Portland Middle Schools uh, in the paper, I think, over the course of the last uh, few months where, where there's been a good deal of coverage. And I would have to say to you that I think that, that your buildings are in at least as poor shape uh, as the buildings in the city of Portland. Uh, in some cases, I think perhaps worse. Uh, and in addition, to, in addition to that, I think the just aside from the dangerous uh, conditions uh, uh, that affect the environment, just visually, it's not the kind of an environment that I think we want our kids to be, want our kids to be learning in. Um, the amount of space that you have at the middle school is adequate uh, in terms of square footage, but as everybody knows, it's all in the wrong place and all strung out. Uh, and the square footage at the elementary school, uh, as even, this is even with the portables, is inadequate and also all strung out. We've been through a lot of analysis, and, and the way we've approached this with the committee is to, uh, is, to talk, uh, is to talk about and concentrate on things like site. And we talk about site for a couple of meetings and sort of ignore the buildings, and then we go back and talk <coughs> about the buildings and ignore the site. And then we try to, finally tried to, uh, to put them all together. And in the process of that, we, we've come to a couple of, a couple of conclusions. Uh, first, in regard to the site, We've come to the conclusion that it is not possible to resolve the circulation uh, on the site in a safe way in terms of buses uh, and cars and children from the Scott Dyer side. And so that we came to the conclusion uh, that it made a great deal of good sense to develop the primary access to the system from the south or the back side of the, or the, back side of the complex. Uh, inherent with that was the concept of eliminating the traffic through the middle uh, of, the, of the complex. Uh, and with that uh, came the realization that if we eliminated this, that we were going to need another outlet uh, onto, or another outlet or an inlet into the site because we just couldn't bring the traffic in from over on the high school side. And so the uh, key to all this is developing another access into the, into the complex from Scott Dyer, Scott Dyer Road. In regard to parking, uh, we felt that there are about 150 cars on site right now, and it's our judgment at this point that we need to park about 200 cars on site. And if we take the parking out of there, we need to develop a lot, a lot more new parking, which you see here, and there's also some located here and some located at the front of, of the complex. And lastly, uh, one of the conclusions that we came to very early was that we needed to, we needed to retain all of the, all the playing fields uh, that now exist. So, as you can see, once, you start, once we start dealing with these site constraints, the issues of where do we put new construction start to become somewhat limited in terms of how we tie this together. In regard to the buildings, the conclusions that we came to uh, were, first of all, that the D-wing, which you see down here, this may be a little confusing for you to look at because these are second floors, as you see, sort of spotted in space around the, around the building, but this is the D-wing down here at the far end of the complex of the boiler room. The D-wing uh, is very much an impediment, uh, it's located here, towards trying to consolidate and create a center, create a center for the building's middle school, and plus the fact that the building 
is probably the most difficult to use programmatically of any of the buildings that, that now exist, and it's also in very, very poor shape. And all of those things led us to conclude uh, that that building should be, should be demolished as part, of, as part of the scheme, and it was going to be very difficult to make anything really come together without doing that. And along with that, immediately, immediately next to it is the, the bus garage, which uh, is kind of right in the middle of things down there, uh, an inappropriate place for it, uh, as well as an eyesore, and we concluded that that needed to go. The other conclusion that was fairly easy to make was that with probably some small exceptions that the mechanical and electrical systems in both sets of buildings needed to be entirely, entirely replaced. Uh, the program space uh, that we've developed and, and part of the packet that you will get tonight uh, has program space programs for both the middle school and the elementary school. Uh, we developed the, the space requirements by uh, using the Department of Education standards and then having meetings with teachers and administrators to determine where the special, special areas were that, we needed, to, that needed, we needed to emphasize. And what that showed was that we needed a total of 63,000 square feet uh, in the primary school, and I think we're probably at about 52 well in now or somewhere in that neighborhood, 41. Uh, and 85, we needed 85,000 square feet uh, in the middle school, which is not too far off of where the middle school is right at this point in time. I think if you include D in the bus garage, it may be up close to 90, but that's uh, not very far off but it's all in the wrong place, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, so that the area that we need to replace is based on uh, taking that program and coming up with the space that we feel that we can renovate uh, and then building new space, which is going to, going to replace the portables, replace the D, make up the area deficiencies, and also <coughs> allow for a little swing space uh, within the whole complex so that we aren't building this to be chocker block full on day, on day one. And finally, we felt there w was a real need uh, in the buildings to consolidate them in terms of, of creating real centers for each of the school uh, and clarifying the circulation within the schools and, and creating real, real, front doors, uh, real front doors to the buildings. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure we have them all strung out here, but we're, we're now up to Scheme H, <laughs> which we have here, here tonight uh, to talk about. Uh, but we have explored an awful lot of options. I think we came to some fairly early agreement uh, on the site uh, configuration and actually ended up throwing out some of the early lettered schemes because some of them were based on, on were and revolved around entering uh, from the Scott Dyer Road side and we just plain couldn't, <coughs> couldn't make that work uh, satisfactorily. The area that there has been considerable uh, discussion on and I think what you can see But there's been considerable discussion uh, as to whether this ought to be a primary school and a middle school or whether it ought to be one large building complex which has some common, uh, common areas to both uh, located, in, located in, in the connection. And, and there was a, a, been a great deal of discussion revolving around that and I think certainly we would welcome some of your thoughts and questions on, on that tonight. Uh, it appears that that issue is one primarily of, of a conceptual one because uh, the, uh, the uh, cost estimates that we have run uh, indicate that there probably isn't going to be much difference in cost as to whether we connect the two buildings or don't connect the two buildings. So I think the issue becomes one of, of a philosophical uh, issue as to whether we want it to be all one building. Uh, and also there are, I think, a large number of advantages to, to the program that everybody feels come from, from putting the two buildings, buildings together. The costs that we've developed uh, at this point in time indicate, and I think you may have all read it uh, in the newspaper by now, that, that we're looking at a price range of somewhere between 10 and $12 million, and, and the number that we have on this scheme is $11,500,000 right at the moment. That breaks down to 6.6 uh, for the elementary school and about 4.5 eight uh, for the you know, six point six for the middle school and four point eight for the uh, for the elementary school in terms of how that is uh, how all that is split up at this point I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, a little bit about the scheme that we're now uh, talking about we certainly in response to questions can go back and look at at other schemes that have been developed and if you have uh, a thought maybe we've previously explored it and then again maybe we were, uh, maybe we haven't uh, 
but as I mentioned earlier, Scheme H was in response to the discussion that we had of Scheme F and G, which you see down here uh, last week, one of which was connected uh, and the other wasn't. And at the conclusion of that meeting last week, we had a, a list of things that the building committee had suggested that uh, they felt needed to be done uh, to, improve, to improve the schemes. And I'll, I'll point those out, those out as, as we go along. But there was, in fact, a consensus of the committee uh, last week that we were all headed in the direction of a single connected building rather than two, rather than two separate buildings. But I think, uh, start with the site plan first, and I, we've been over this a little bit uh, at this point in time. But this is the, this is the uh, elementary school complex here uh, in dark brown, and this is the current middle school complex in dark brown. And what you see missing here are the portables uh, that fill in and also building D, uh, which, is located, which is located over here. The lighter yellow here is uh, the new additions that are being proposed uh, to, to add on to uh, those two buildings, uh, although there's a tremendous amount of renovation obviously taking place and rearrangement taking place uh, in both, but the, the new space are, includes classroom space uh, here, which are, are two pods for uh, seventh and eighth grade. Uh, in the middle school, there is a new circulation path created along here on the other side of what is now your gymnasium, uh, off of which a number of things happen, uh, including getting into the cafeteria here, between the two buildings is a common common cafeteria or cafetorium which perhaps will be a performing arts space which can be opened up to, to, uh, to be a single space or could be uh, and would be for most usage uh, separate cafeterias for each each school and locating the gymnasium here uh, at the at the elementary school and really creating a new a new center for the elementary school uh, which revolves around uh, that gymnasium and entrance uh, and entrance at this point. Looking in, at the scheme in, in a little bit more, a little bit more detail, so the elementary school down here and, and the middle school, uh, middle school here. The old high school, original high school building is located uh, at that point too. To orient you a little bit to the, to the different colors, and some of this is a, is a bit difficult to read. I think it's easier to see on here, but the areas that you can sort of see even a little darker. Uh, indicates the new construction, uh, whereas the brighter areas are the, are the existing buildings that are being renovated. The, the green, uh, lighter green, are classrooms. The darker green you see here are, are science laboratories, uh, gymnasium spaces, and then support spaces are, are indicated in gray. Unified arts uh, in terms of art, music, uh, band, computer, couple of ways to approach the entrance to the school. What you see shown here is a bus loop uh, that comes in around here and goes back out again, which doesn't connect with the traffic on the other side. Uh, this is the automobile entrance over here, which comes into all of the major parking areas and has a loop here for parent pickup and drop off, which does not connect with the bus loop and allows the kids from the school access across to the fields without having to cross any roads, uh, any roads at all at this point. An option, of course, would be to connect those so that you could, if you wish, uh, drive through drive through the site. Now, that's something to that's something to be still uh, to be still discussed. But assuming that we come in here. We 
Who's a knuckle right here? I promise y'all I'm going to do that, but I think we're good for this. What we said, we mean knuckle, and right now it's very diagrammatic. It's an area uh, which is uh, symbolic of uh, a connecting spot between parts of the building and accommodates both vertical and horizontal circulation and maybe has some other odd ends in it as well. But you come into this knuckle and down this circulation spine here and up in this one, and at the end of this is the meeting center here, which you can circulate by along the courtyard here, and looks out into this space here now, which has no has no automobiles in it. Uh, the unified arts for the middle school are located in the same wing that they are now, and that we have band, industrial arts, music, and computer uh, located in a renovated in this renovated wing here. Service to the building comes in much as it does now. Connecting the two schools is the common is the common cafeteria. Now going back to the elementary schools, which which enter in this entrance here, you come in to this space here, and we've created another major event here, if you will, and I won't call it a knuckle this time, in terms of, of circulation, uh, which happens immediately adjacent to the gymnasium, uh, which can be used as a, a gathering place for kids when they first come into school in the morning. And one of the major changes that we've made last time uh, involves adding a, a fair amount of second floor space and, re and, and doing, I think, a better job of reusing the existing building that we had. And I talked about one example of that here, but the previous team had shown demolishing this wing and putting a new media center in here, and we felt that that wasn't an economical way, an economical way to go. The other, another big change that we've made, and it was in response to a lot of discussion at the committee level about the elementary school lacking any kind of a good center and so we've created a new center here, which we think is an opportunity that may relate to the town plan and access way uh, across to the town hall where we are now, uh, across this way. We've put it, it's added an addition uh, onto the lunch school to add uh, three classrooms on the second floor and administration on the first floor. And in doing that, are tearing down the existing knuckle, if you will, which has bathrooms and no bathroom here, uh, here. This gets our, our, our public uh, out at the front. It creates a really nice, I think, community center. One of the other comments were with the gym over here that it was difficult to access for, for a weekend, uh, for weekend events. Uh, the classrooms are, are still, we still have the issue, which I think there's no, no ultimate resolution to in the fact that we still have somewhat of a railroad car here. Uh, but one of the things that we've been able to do is to, is to break that up a little bit so that at least the kids won't be walking by uh, each other all the time. Uh, I think the people in the middle here are going to get the, uh, the worst end of the deal uh, as far as the traffic is concerned, but certainly much less than they have now. And here in the center of the school, this is really the gymnasium, an entrance here, down here, uh, opposing the media center on the other side is the media center for the elementary school with the computer, arts, uh, and science all located in a single sort of learning center, if you will, right at the middle, uh, right at the middle of the school. Um, I think that I think that that uh, that's pretty much where we where we are at this point in time. And I, th I think just to summarize the things for the committee, the things that have have changed since the last time is is that we have I think compacted the middle school uh, scheme and, and organized the three upper grades around that courtyard. That we've separated these entrances further apart than they were were originally uh, in some of the previous schemes that we've had. We've increased the amount of second story space here at the lunch school and also uh, here uh, in the seventh and eighth grade, uh, seventh and eighth grade houses, which has reduced the demolition that we were planning, reduced the amount of new construction that we had. We've relocated the service entrance here. If you recall, we were bringing traffic into this courtyard here and entering service there, and that was something that caused a, a good deal of, of concern in terms of the noise of trucks uh, adjacent to the uh, classrooms. We've created the central entrance space for the elementary school here. We've relocated the gym, which was from here uh, to there, and we've developed a learning center down there. So that's, that's sort of where we are uh, at this point in time, and that's a fairly long explanation, but I couldn't figure out how to do it any shorter, because <laughs> that's about, what, eight meetings or so, maybe, I'm not sure. somewhere in that neighborhood at this point. So I, I think 
I certainly would welcome uh, any additions that Art or Ellen uh, or any of the committee members would, would like to make. And I, I think at that, this point, I'll, I'll turn it back to Paul, who can moderate uh, any questions that we might have from, from either side of the room here. Do we have any questions as far as the committee at this stage? If not, I'd certainly open it up and welcome <coughs> any comments and questions you might have. Yes. If you could comment as far as the mechanical system uh, with uh, what we are looking at at this stage or what would be recommended. Uh, I, I think in, in general we're recommending that, that for the most part most of the, most of the new ventilating and electrical systems be replaced as I mentioned there may be, we haven't gone far enough to identify those pieces, but there may be pieces that can, can be reused. I think one of the things that we are, are, are certainly anticipating Center, at the center of the whole complex, which will, will take care of, of, uh, of both the middle school and the elementary school, and we're anticipating that there should be a, a sizable reduction in energy costs uh, in, on a square foot basis uh, versus what you're experiencing now from the combination of the centralization of the system and also the improvement, uh, the improvement of the envelope of the building. Uh, but we haven't talked about air conditioning, and that may be something that we want to talk about. Any other questions? Uh, Bill and Mel, um, uh, is there anything in these, any specs in these plans as far as uh, sort of insulating design criteria that you're trying to meet? In other words, are these going to be uh, R40 or something or R5? Well, I, I guess with, without without listing all the, all the numbers, we're, we're going to be uh, certainly striving and, and meeting the ASHRAE, you know, ASHRAE standards for, for energy efficiency uh, with the buildings, and I believe that's uh, what R38 and the uh, R38 and the overhead and uh, R19 in the wall, so. Uh, and the energy, the state has very stringent energy right. use standards for schools, and we have to uh, review the whole project. Well, to see what ultimately what it is because that, uh, well, even I wonder if we could do a little better than 19. And, and well, you may, and, and it's, a, it's, it's basically uh, what you need to look at when you get into the design is the cost-benefit ratio uh, of uh, increased, uh, increased energy, uh, energy efficiency. One of the other things that we're doing here, which I think is going to benefit you uh, immensely, is, is that you look at, at this plan and the amount of exterior wall that you clearly have reduced the exterior surface of the building considerably uh, with this scheme here. And, and our, our surrounding uh, the gymnasium uh, with new construction, which is uh, uh, the exterior walls of a gym are a very large energy loss uh, because they're so, so large in proportion to the rest of the school. Uh, and by getting those to be, for the large part, inside walls, that uh, you, you basically do away with the heat loss entirely. Uh, is there anything in there for, for low E glass windows? Haven't talked about that yet, but that will definitely be considered. 
No, you're, you're a, a quantum leap ahead of, uh, <laughs> we haven't found the windows yet, let alone figured out whether they're, <laughs> whether they're uh, low E or not, so. Well, equivalent of about a half a pane of glass in <laughs> most of that building right now, I think. So you're absolutely right. Yeah, that's a good comment. Yes. Well, no, I, I think we would anticipate that there could be as well a second drop-off here uh, for, for both elementary and, and middle school students, and I think how that would be used would be uh, an administrative decision. But if a parent did come in, if we did not build this loop here uh, or disconnect it here, the, an elementary school student would be dropped off at this point right here under the, the way this is laid out right now. We'd have to walk across the face of the building to the entrance. So no, and I think, but the, the good thing about this scheme is that they could walk across without crossing the bus traffic at all. No. Yeah. Yes, it does. Uh, Ellen, can you answer that question? I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. Lab's probably not a good choice of words. Jan? Go ahead. Well, we, we need to, where we are now, we'll eventually, we'll eventually get to that before we're, uh, before we're finished, and we need now to go back and reach consensus with the, with the committee uh, and also explore anything that may come out of the meeting tonight as, as to as this is the direction that we're going in. <coughs> and our next step is going to be uh, to start to, to make a building out of this. And I would guess it's probably going to be several more weeks before we have uh, uh, any ex exterior elevations uh, to look at. And, and this clearly, that's going to be a major challenge. There's a lot of thought there uh, that's going to have to, to go into how we deal with some of the existing exterior walls of the building. And at this point in time, we only know that we need to deal with them. Uh, we need to deal with them in some fashion. I think we're feeling that we can make a, we can make a fairly major impact on, on the appearance, uh, appearance of the building. And I, I think we're going to be, going to be looking to this old high school building for some of the, the cues, if you will, uh, in developing it. One of the thoughts that we had in terms of tearing this down originally was that we'd need to be above to get rid of it because of its juxtaposition to the building.
basement of the old high school is slated for storage right at this point in time. So, and, uh, I ate my first lunch here. <laughs> I hate to tell you when, but the first high school lunch I ate was right there. <laughs> right in the same room. <laughs> That's a real good question, and, and uh, yeah, we have a little bit, uh, and I think I, Ellen's been working on that. I think I'll ask her to to speak to that. It's a very, very difficult, uh, it's a very difficult problem, and uh, the the big issue here is is how do we uh, keep a a a safe and and uh, a safe learning environment, and also a learning environment in which one can hear anything. Uh, during during the course of construction and still accommodate all the pupils. Ellen's got some some basic ideas, but our, our goal here is to try and figure out how to do it without extending the construction period out for a, a long time. And we were kicking this around uh, the last couple of days. phase there'll be sort of a sub phase where you basically shut the way down and remove all the asbestos, no kids being there at the time, and then come back in and do the construction. Well, could you explain the circulation in and out of the elementary school and how it interfaces with the high school and going away? Sure. Um, in terms of the 
circulation over here. Uh, but yeah, basically, and there, there are a couple of options here, and I'm not sure it's totally, it's totally been resolved in terms of which, di which direction to go in, but this is the entrance to your, to your, to your high school now. And there are, two, there are two possibilities for entrance into this, into this bus loop here. One is to come in uh, the entry of the high school here, and I suspect that may require some improvements be made uh, at this point. Come down here, swing around the loop, uh, picking up and dropping up off children, uh, and then back out again. The other option is to come in the drive here, which is currently, currently gated off uh, between public safety uh, and public works, and to come in here and around uh, and out again, which is a, I think is, is a reasonable option if it's just restricted to, to uh, bus traffic. A couple, couple other things in regard to the, to the entrance to the elementary school is there is also a teacher's parking lot located here for the elementary school, and we anticipate there will probably be some more teachers parking uh, up at, at the, uh, where the monument is, uh, is located right now. Uh, but that's pretty much how that's going to work. There is, a, there is a, another possibility, uh, which is one of the things that came out of the discussion, uh, out of the discussion at, the, at the committee meeting last time, is that the town, the town plan shows a potential link from, from this building through here, uh, pedestrian link from this building through here to the school complex. And that's one of the, the reasons that we, we created a, a central space here uh, in the elementary school that could receive a pedestrian entrance from, from, that, uh, from that direction. Uh, I think one of the other things to mention is that I think we would probably do anticipate that there's still going to be entrance and exit to this elementary school from other places other than right here and, and that, that, that the kids who are, who are, are walking from the park we we'll probably still continue to come up and, and come in here and, and go out over here and go back home that way rather than, than, than down at this point, would be my guess. Anything else, Mike? Is that, uh, That's fine. Yeah. That's, I, I think that there probably, there, there likely, uh, uh, there likely is not enough parking. Well, there may be some volunteer parking possible at this point, but I would not be at all surprised that in terms of, of certainly volunteer and event parking may very well be taking place in this major lot over here. Well, I think one, one, looked at other yeah. configurations right. for the parking at the north end of the elementary here. Yeah, there may be some issues that still, we certainly aren't fixed on anything there. The other one, one of the other nice things that this really does is that currently access to and parking for your fields is, is very poor right now. And this, this lot here really helps resolve that to, uh, to a very great extent, I think. <coughs> The, maybe Art wants to comment on that, but Art and, and Paul uh, the Liberty were out and, and, and walked around uh, the coal the, complex the other day looking for a good spot for that. Uh, the basic assumption is that the, that the bus garage ceases to exist and that we will locate the buses elsewhere on the site in service parking only, so we would not be recreating that bus garage. Uh, and Paul and Dana and I have looked at the alternatives Yeah, well, we really, I, I think that we're, we're very mindful of the need to create an image of, uh, I think there's a right of, as <coughs> we've talked about in the committee, a right of passage from elementary school uh, to, to middle school and having a kid in each right at the moment. I, I, I have a, a good understanding of that and that there will be a very big need to make those entrances, those entrances separate. I think that, that the, the feeling is that what is shown in the corridor across here 
here will probably, in fact, in, in most day-to-day -day usage, there will be a real separation between both sides, and that would be something that could be opened up and used uh, on occasion. But I think in the normal functioning of a school, that probably wouldn't uh, wouldn't be the case. And I think I think the other the other thing that we're mindful of uh, I, in, in terms of dealing with the design is to try and keep the scale of this at a smaller at a smaller level and more at a little kid level. Uh, so that you really are stepping up to a bigger to a bigger building uh, to a bigger building over here, and that's the that's the idea. Uh, but again, th there is definitely going to be uh, a real design challenge, if you will, in, in terms of making that come off. It's perhaps easier to talk about it than it is to do it. <laughs> Hey, Art, you might want to chat about that because we have had some discussions yeah, with the we have, we have town a and the. Discussion. I know that there was a meeting earlier today. Some of the uh, town staff. Our understanding is that in all likelihood we would continue to provide emergency access into that courtyard for those kinds of purposes. Uh, hopefully, we wouldn't have to be an asphalt driveway the way it is today. It's something more sensitive to the other uses for the, for the courtyard. Uh, as we get further along in the development, we will be meeting with each of the different departments in the, in the town, public works and fire safety and police, to make sure that we uh, have that safety. If I might comment, Art, uh, Mike and I had a discussion on that, uh, and the plan that we have this evening is going to be circulated tomorrow uh, to the department heads, so they'll have an opportunity to start looking at uh, what concepts we have uh, and be able to receive their comments on that. We have at least uh, sat down with the uh, uh, planning uh, board on an informal basis to get an in initial comments uh, in helping us develop uh, some of these alternatives. The other uh, question that you raised regarding the elevations, although we have not seen any elevations on paper, uh, we do have a model that uh, was prepared, and I, I don't think you brought it this evening. No, we didn't. It was, it was too... We, Too we, many iterations yeah, back. It, <laughs> yeah. it, it, has, it has evolved as well as this plan, uh, but it's, it has helped us uh, to at least perceive what uh, the massing of the building uh, is like, and we've been very aware of uh, trying to minimize that. I think the, I, would, I would reiterate that because the committee is very sensitive to the issue of the separateness that those entrances must have. Uh, also, the, the, the link is a large <coughs> one story, it's not a big two-story building, uh, it's a, a curved building. As we begin to study more in elevation and the uh, uh, model, it will get broader and much more than it appears in the document. The last question I have is just, I didn't expect that when we talked about New York being the best parking yes. down in that corner. Yeah. Um, I think somewhere through there is the green that will come yeah. from the mixture of some sensitivity. Right, that was brought up by We, we do have concerns uh, in regards to the green belt as well as abutting uh, owners, uh, all of the abutters along that side. Uh, yeah, yeah that's, that's right, Paul, because there clearly is, is going to be a, a need for some real sensitivity uh, in, regard, uh, in regard to this entrance over here as well as some, some traffic analysis and consideration of this, of this entrance drive here. And I, I think that the, the feedback that we've had from the planning staff and planning board is that conceptually this sounds like an okay idea to them, but, but yeah, and, and but there's definitely, I think there's both fencing and screening that's going to be required uh, along here, and I, I think uh, there's quite an elevation drop. There is, and but but we're concerned about we're concerned about automobile headlights. We're concerned about any kind of uh, any kind of street lighting that might be in terms of shielding and all those uh, all those kinds of things. Yeah, Nancy, you had a Without adding 
That's right. I think that if we, if we combine, uh, we, we get a, a fairly economical approach to a, a performing arts space within the facility. Admittedly, it's not going to be a, a true 100% performing arts space, but it's a, it will be a major improvement over uh, performances in a gymnasium or, or in your, your standard run-of-the-mill uh, cafeteria. And I really don't like the word cafetorium very well. Uh, but, but we have, have successfully used this concept uh, in the Gray New Gloucester Middle School and we're able to create really quite a nice space out of it which uh, stepped down in, in level so that you weren't, uh, that you did have some elevation as you got to the back of the room, uh, which has some pretty nice lighting in it. Uh, it has a nice stage which has a, a, a dual purpose as a music, as a music classroom. Uh, and in doing all of that, we were also able to preserve access uh, uh, for the disabled to all the levels of the, all of the viewing levels within uh, and eating levels within the cafetorium as well as uh, uh, on grade uh, level four access to the stage in the room. So, uh, so that's kind of conceptually where, where we are with this, but you could, if we separated the cafeterias into, into each school, we wouldn't have enough square footage to really generate a nice, a, a nice space and that by, by co combining the two, we really kind of get a, a real, uh, uh, I think a real bang for our bucks out of this thing. Well, that may be something that we may want to take a look at, and I don't know whether Ellen, Ellen who, who uh, did the programming, may want to comment on that, I, I guess, in terms of class size and so forth. But we, what we have done uh, is to establish the numbers of classrooms based on, uh, on the projected number of kids, uh, number of kids in the facility. Uh, so I don't know, maybe you want to say some more about that, Ellen. Huh? If I might add to that and maybe ask Connie to uh, uh, comment, uh, we did have market decisions uh, update uh, their population uh, uh, estimates. And uh, we were taking that into consideration, uh, certainly something that we uh, want to revisit. But Connie, maybe you can comment slightly well, on that. I think that's uh, essentially it. There's one more step.
consideration leaving the kindergarten at the high school uh, when we were checking possibilities uh, originally in our uh, study uh, school space study committee we took the figures that we had which includes frankly the, the population pattern that we're still seeing and uh, figured the maximum number of students at the high school and it's still allowed room for the uh, kindergarten unless the kindergarten starts in I'm going, to, really? I'm going to talk about the connector again in, in the gym since I'm the one that seems to move it around a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How architecturally can you make that link? What could you do to make it look not so massive, not just in elevation, I, I, but from Scott Dyer when you look down that mall? I, I think that there are there are probably a number of, there are a number of opportunities here in, in terms of the fact that this doesn't necessarily level roof across here and we've got a, a requirement for, for a lower space at least right here for the kitchen uh, the circulation along here has an opportunity to be dropped down lower and I think as we as we start studying these walls uh, that there may be some articulation in terms of, of things that, that move in and out uh, along <coughs> that wall to, to create some, some interest in shadow and, and scale uh, along those looks right now, so well, that's pretty diagrammatic. To, from the other side, do something to identify yeah, those entrance nice. points in some symbolic way as well. I think it's very unlikely that this will be a you know, large blank wall. Well, it would be done to think about it a little bit here as you look along the uh, east wall where the administration is being added. There's some variegation to that to bring natural light into these areas along that street. Can you architecturally do something similar to the 30s building to make it? Well, we have, uh, it's, it's really kind of early for us, yeah. I think, to respond to that directly to, uh, to uh, that type of architectural question. But certainly, as Paul mentioned earlier, this is going to be sort of the, the cornerstone of the departure. I could just comment, uh, the perspective from Scott Dyer Road, I think you have to bear in mind that there's quite a grade Yes. From Scott yeah. This is quite a distance. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, it yeah. Looking yeah. at this scale of planning, it's, it's actually, if you look at the site plan, you perhaps get a, a better feel for the, for the length of those, uh, those buildings. Yeah, you when you stop and think this is, this, is down, this is down at the Lunt School, and you think about looking at the Lunt School from up here, it's quite a long, quite a long, yeah. ways, uh, quite a long ways down. We'll see over yeah. It. yeah. I think we're going to be we're going to be examining those issues both in, in drawing and model and model form as we as we move along and uh, we'll be going through I think as we start to talk about those things much the same process that we've been through in terms of getting eight more getting to here yeah at least <laughs> I agree where you have it I will not move it again okay I was going to say <laughs> if you want to move it again you're going to come to the morning after meeting in our office Charlie. <laughs> since our last meeting is on a program basis. Have you had a chance to see enough to comment whether those were successful? They appear to be as far as the reducing the footprint and maybe using space a little more efficiently. Are there any program trade-offs?
we've seen. Yes. Yeah. 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 Connie and Good. Paul uh, had a trip to our office to see it before we tweaked it out. Our first perception, perception, we were shocked when we saw it, as far as the changes. And it, and it seems like it, it just less uh, threatening for a new fifth grader to walk into the front of the building as opposed to getting swallowed up to the back. That's, that's a good point. I mean, our other concept had the fifth grade is basically moving all the way through the building, and, and uh, this is an easier adjustment. Well, some of our fifth grade staff, they were concerned once we came <coughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, even then, I, I didn't see it as we've shown it now, but maybe it comes back to Right. Structure is close enough to each other to say that. It's conceivable um, they could be like it. I also really like having the media center close to the fourth grade and the elementary level, um, just because there's a lot of individual research work done by that grade level. So I think it absolutely is that. The city could use a job kind of to come together and move them away based on. The only uh, program comment I would have to make, and I'll make this pitch again, is that I think the computer center in the at middle school should be at the media yeah. center yeah. As, as part of it. If we're looking 30 or 40 years right. down the road, that's going to be key. That's a good point. I think we were talking earlier that uh, we were sort of moving in that direction uh, philosophically as well, and we've shown this as oversized. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to look at the traffic pattern and see if it's That's a good comment, and I, I think there may be, uh, and again, in looking at what the, the numbers that, that might be required to do that, because there, there does exist the opportunity to use the teacher's parking lot uh, at this point here. The other thing that we may certainly want to do as a part of, of whatever uh, gets developed along here is to develop some covered outside space that would allow one to get from, from here to there uh, under cover. We've really struggled with that parking <laughs> issue, uh, especially at that end and that corner. The very yeah. place that's really yeah. Can I can I just make a comment since this is kind of a new plan? Um, <laughs> is there any possibility of using that bus turnaround during school hours for just short term uh, volunteer parking? I was Something like that. Sure. Is there yeah, I was thinking about that as like that sure. is first came up. Yeah, I think that would leave an enforcement issue. Sure. Yeah, I mean, you would end up with administrative issues around that. Yeah. But I, I certainly, it's not an uncommon thing to see schools that have uh, bus drop off sign for buses only during certain hours and, and, and attempt to uh, attempt to, to manage that kind of a situation, which, which will give you a little bit more flexibility uh, in the plan. Uh, What's the total number of volunteers likely? They should have the easiest use of the building. Yeah. Good point. There's a concern about the parking off Scarf Dyer if you created 
another loop there of parking. We talked about the walkers. Yes. And if you bring in some some parents dropping off kids or picking off picking up kids, this is new yeah. putting something there. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I have it a is. problem yeah. with that. I think yeah. we're, we were trying to close that off. Yeah. yeah we've had debates in our office about <laughs> that. You can tell I have a lot. <laughs> but there was concern about the number of right. walkers that yes. goes to Brentwood and et cetera. And you're creating another another problem. And I would agree with Beth, if you're going to have a new entrance, then that's where you need to focus traffic to go and not allow them another place to park. That would be easy enough to restrict that parking with key cards. If it, if it, teacher park. Teacher park. Yes, okay. primarily teacher park. So it would have to be somehow this. closed yeah. off because, right. because you don't know the population of parents around here. I mean, they have yeah, the every the possible of parents anywhere. <laughs> access they can get to the building. We've heard of that. <laughs> I think you need to go watch them. <laughs> no, I understand that. No, I understand that. And it, and it came out of it when a, a, a comment at our last meeting that we looked at that, I think, and yeah. we also looked at other configurations for parking out there that may be more concentrated and more controllable. I think uh, as we have always, you know, as we've always struggled with the issue of getting parking for staff at the elementary school because we have this large parking area there and it's a long distance and elementary staff have, are always carrying lots of stuff and, and uh, so we really need to get parking at uh, easily accessible points in that building. The other thing we're trying to do is not get back up into here and right. impinge on the play area up in there too. So it's a, it's a bit of a tight situation. That's it clearly is a it's clearly an issue with the plan and it's a it's a if we could accommodate all of the staff elementary staff parking there, that would be, It'd be nice ideal. Yeah. Certain staff volunteers. We've 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 had a lot of difficulty with the compactness of, of Pond Cove being at that end of the site and yes. still separating the bus traffic versus right. the uh, car traffic. Yeah. And the concern for the possible continued use of Gordon Way, there, there are a number of questions. We're As a way of sending a message, I would very pleased to see that you're no longer in front of the Carson Memorial Library. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's over there. <laughs> I think there are a lot of opportunities to explore how we use this this space out right. here, and, and I, I, there are both both quiet opportunities as well as as more uh, uh, noisy opportunities in terms of the fact that we have the <coughs> located immediately next to that, which provides an area right off of the gym for some outside activities, the possibility of creating some quiet areas uh, for outside study and classrooms off of the uh, off of the two media centers. Sorry, so this that's is something. This courtyard piece in here has a lot more opportunity for use as outdoor play area for the elementary kids than it did earlier when we had the classroom pod over right. there. Right. Because now we're not really putting the kids next to any classroom space. This is really yeah, great. I, I think to keep them back. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that there's some, there is something really nice about. and that you put your kind of public spaces on one side uh, of the house and the private spaces of the house on the other side so none of you are looking into uh, each other's windows and that was a fairly common arrangement. Uh, and that may free up some space down on the top end.
before we're done. Where does Bob's service delivery take place? <laughs> I mean, we so that's close enough to the kitchen. And that was, a, as I said. This is actually, uh, we passed the hurdle by saying, okay, we can do it like you do it in the hospital, if you will, with carts. Uh, one of the reasons that we were able to agree with that decision is that there are no classrooms along there either. Right. So this is a, a really a direct shot <laughs> right into the kitchen. Just our, just yes. our. <laughs> The art room orient. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. The art gets the the art room gets the uh, courtyard to offset the uh, service going by on the other side. So I, we think that that uh, Susie would probably think that's a decent trade off. I think so. I think from, from, from our point of view in Portland, uh, the, there, there probably is, is no reason at all why that couldn't be uh, a good way to come in for the buses and you could keep the buses out of all of this over here <laughs> entirely, but, but uh, Mike may want, and I, I think there are some issues there and I, I, we may not even, you know, be familiar the, with them all yet, so. When the town council established this committee, uh, it amended the original charge of the committee to provide that
second grade, second grade classroom working on uh, rainforest activities and such with all the, you know, with the congestion in the classrooms, there's just no room for any kind of special you know, activities that take some space working with plants and you know, just the mess that's created. I think um, you know, it's too bad not to take advantage of the kids' tremendous interest in science at this age, and right now we're just stymied by space. So I, I would hope we can keep that room in there. And it's hard in a uh, typical classroom space to, to go from that sort of activity that, to another activity. Or, yeah, back to, time. yeah, be fun, right? <clears throat> it also becomes another swing room yes. if you need it. Plus, it allows for shared programming so that uh, you can have things set up in advance right. and multiple classes can come through and use them repetitively. Right. And, 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 and take things down. And the greater communication between the teachers. Yeah. Do we have any more questions? What do we do in Knuckles? <laughs> <laughs> what can we do that? What have you done in Knuckles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of those knuckles is quite big. You know, and do we have to stop and reach <laughs> as, as, as Paul mentioned, I think uh, we, we were trying to come up with a generic knuckle before we came up with it. We're not there yet. Yeah. Uh, right, we but in most most of the cases, most of these cases, they represent vertical circulation. The ele elementary one by the gym that would go out to towards yes. 77, that's a big one. Yes. Yeah, it is. We've got, a, we've got a big, yeah, we've got a top. Yeah, there's a real top issue here because we, we, need to, we need to transition up to the second floor here. So that could have elevation. So, so, so yes. there, there yes. will likely be maybe an elevator here that maybe each of them yes. elevators. Yes. Some there. of them are going to have ramps in them. I think the other thing that they also at least are diagrammatically recognizing as you go through the building, but there are major points of intersection of traffic where you need to, where you need to have a little bit more space and have places for people to hang out and so forth. So. Many mistakes in the last 20 years or so are those intersections, just given that they, there are no vertical circulation, just that the right. volume right. of flow just to, uh, comes to a point where we're going to elbow to elbow turning through too many different directions. Cross traffic and, and turning traffic. And it's best if we can avoid that. You mentioned ramps. We certainly are not going to have ramps like we that now exist in the middle not of like corridors you now and have stairways. Ramp, but <laughs> I'll be surprised if we don't if we solve this problem without some ramps. So and, and we still have some very oh, yeah. serious vertical circulation and level matching problems that need need uh, yeah. some very creative thought. Yeah. Yeah, there's a. But yeah. we will try to avoid the uh, ramp in the middle of the corridor. <laughs>
And that was something that's seen as a, as a very positive comment uh, from, some, from the staffs on, on both schools was the, the opportunity to interact across from elementary to middle right. uh, with teachers, which would be really facilitated by the physical, by the physical connection as well. I thought that was a, a big plus. Could you point out areas that can be uh, separated for community service type functions during the uh, weekends or evenings? Well, certainly the obvious ones are the, the performance-based cafeteria, whatever it is, space, and the uh, gym at the elementary, uh, as well as, uh, to with a little bit more work, I mean, the uh, gym in the, uh, in the middle school. I think we do have the opportunity to, to be able to, to use this whole piece of the building right, right here and, and, and close the, the, the academic off to the public while while those are being used on, on weekends or nights or, or whatever and uh, basically cut, cut off all of the classroom right. uh, spaces and that actually would work well should that become the town center mm -hmm. <coughs> did you have a question there no no I was just going to comment with with uh, what Jan was saying um, that there are also are all the special ed ones of varying sizes that I'm sure yes. are not going to be in use every minute of every day and I'm sure right. won't be used right. for content. Right. There, there is quite a lot of uh, special education spaces of uh, different sizes in the elementary. And there again, the goal here is again to spread those out throughout the Yeah, I, I think one of the things that we thought about too, and this is just an, an architectural piece, which is nothing but a, but something in our mind at this point in time, is that with, with this mass and volume here and this space here, that there exists an opportunity to, to do something symbolically here in terms of an architectural form that can be seen uh, from over here uh, at the town hall, which will start to tie visual points together in the town. Uh -huh. Issues that uh, we touched upon that we haven't discussed this evening are, uh, is in the master planning uh, with the traffic patterns around the high school uh, as well as drop off and, and parking for the uh, kindergarten. Uh, I know that there was discussion in the past uh, regarding a potential parking lot there and, and that was shelved. Uh, and I do know from comments that I've heard from quite a few people that uh, it's certainly a problem right now with, with drop off of the kindergartens. Uh, so those are issues that we, we certainly will be addressing. Uh, we just haven't gotten that far uh, in our discussions. Any other comments? I have one. Uh, I inadvertently forgot to uh, acknowledge two members of our committee that uh, uh, have certainly helped us and uh, offered a lot of uh, uh, assistance, and that's Connie Goldman and, and Mike McGovern. Uh, they are part of our committee and have uh, been at all our meetings. Do I have any more comments or questions? Uh, we do have, Ellen has uh, packets of uh, the conceptual plan and program uh, and cost estimates that we they have generated. Uh, we certainly would like to have one for each of the members of the committee and, and uh, school board and uh, <coughs> you can help yourselves uh, to whatever is left. I don't know how many we have here. Yeah, I think I'd like to say too on, on, the, on the behalf of, of ourselves is that, that we have had a, a really wonderfully interactive process with, with the committee and the, and the staff and the, and the teachers so far and I think that I would encourage anybody who is here tonight to, to as they think about this problem, to, to please come forward with any ideas uh, that you have and certainly would encourage anybody that, that wants to, to, to attend the meetings because we, we really are, we're having a lot of fun doing this and we've had some really, some, some challenging issues come up and, and an awful lot of, of, of really good discussion about them and, and so we certainly want to encourage the town to, 
to provide that kind of interaction uh, with us in the committee. If, uh, if I might interrupt, I need a gavel. I've lost them. But yeah, here we go. If uh, I might have your attention for a minute, uh, I think uh, I'd like to certainly thank all of you for coming and participating. Uh, your suggestions are, are invaluable. Uh, it's hard to digest all of this information in, in one session, and we we found that. Uh, very difficult as we were going through the process. Uh, it was one step at a time. And uh, we certainly would like you to uh, uh, review all of the information you've received and, and uh, certainly hope that you'll give us more comments uh, and suggestions as we develop our final pro uh, program and, and recommendation. Uh, our goal right now is to develop a plan that, that encompasses uh, uh, the the full site plan, the, the master plan for the site, uh, as well as the, the two buildings as we've discussed, submit that to the uh, school board, uh, and also uh, follow through with uh, the necessary information for referendum in November. Uh, and then the, uh, uh, once that decision is reached, we can take the next step uh, and move on to uh, th the d actual design phase, but that's down the road. Again, I'd like to thank you all, and uh, if you'd like to all over these uh, plans and ask more questions, free to do so. We're adjourned.